In contemporary times, we link diamonds with wealth and romance, and the size of the diamond in one's possession signifies the extent of their affluence. But do you know that diamonds attained this esteemed status largely due to the endeavours of a single family? While diamonds are cherished in America, London and Paris, but are extracted from soils of Africa, huge credit goes to this family for their astute business savvy and amazing marketing strategy in making it popular. In this video, we'll delve into the history of the Oppenheimer family, exploring their significant influence in the business and politics of South Africa. We'll uncover their journey to prominence and affluence, examining how their ingenuity played a pivotal role in transforming diamonds into a globally valued commodity. The Oppenheimer family, one of the wealthiest families in Africa, held a diamond mining empire that once spanned from South Africa to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Their influence over the South African billion-dollar mining industry endured for over 50 years. Sir Ernest Oppenheimer played a pivotal role in shaping the modern diamond industry in the early 20th century. He gained control of large South African mines, establishing a powerful and lucrative cartel that secured immense wealth for his family for generations. Ernest Oppenheimer's impact on the diamond industry was profound. Almost single-handedly, he established an airtight cartel that controlled the major South African mines, the primary sources of precious gemstones. This strategic move catapulted the Oppenheimer family into immense wealth, a status they maintained for an extended period. A significant factor contributing to the wealth and power of the Oppenheimer family was their association with the Anglo-American Mining Company, founded by Sir Ernest Oppenheimer himself. This family's control extended to the De Beers Mining Company, founded by Cecil John Rhodes, former Prime Minister of the Cape Colony during the late 20th century. Ernest Oppenheimer's journey began in Friedling, German Empire, as the son of Edward Oppenheimer, a cigar merchant, and Nanette Oppenheimer. Starting his career at 17 in a London-based diamond brokerage, he impressed his employers, leading to his assignment in South Africa at the age of 22. There, he not only became a prominent buyer, but also served as the mayor of Kimberley from 1912 to 1915, playing a crucial role in raising manpower for the Kimberley Regiment during World War I. Legend has it that Oppenheimer discovered diamond fields where gems were visible on the surface. To extract them, he employed black South African natives with twin cans wrapped around their necks. He would pick up the diamonds one by one without the use of heavy machinery. This method showcased the extraordinary richness of these fields, and Oppenheimer astutely seized the opportunity it presented. Ernest Oppenheimer's vision and strategic decisions left an indelible mark on the diamond industry and secured enduring prosperity for the Oppenheimer family. On June 19, 1906, Oppenheimer married Mary Lena Pillock from London, with whom he had two sons. Following her death in 1934, he remarried Carolyn Harvey, the daughter of a knighted Briton. Actively engaged in civil life, Oppenheimer was elected to the city council in 1908 and later became the mayor in 1912. During the First World War, he played a crucial role in establishing the Kimberley Regiment and organizing labor for the construction of a railway line between Uppington and the Namibian border. In 1921, he received a knighthood from the British government. However, during the 1916 riots, his house was stoned due to anti-German sentiment fueled by assumptions related to his surname. He formed a close relationship with William Lincoln Hanold, an American engineer and the chairman of Transvaal Coal Trust, Brackpan Mines, Springs Mines, and the New Era Company. In 1917, they jointly established the Anglo-American Corporation with financial backing from J.P. Morgan. Knighted in 1921, Oppenheimer served as a permanent director and chairman until 1953. The initial capital for this venture was £1 million, with subscriptions equally split between the United States, England and South Africa. Two years after its inception, Anglo-American acquired diamond mines in southwest Africa, 
challenging the monopoly of the De Beers diamond business. Until the mid-1800s, diamonds were a rare luxury, mainly adorning the hands of monarchs. However, the diamond rush that commenced in South Africa in the latter half of the 19th century flooded the market with diamonds. Since 1888, British imperialist Cecil Rhodes had dominated the entire diamond market through two agencies. The first, De Beers Consolidated Mine Limited, was formed in 1880. The second, a cartel named the London Diamond Syndicate, provided crucial market information, allowing Rhodes, and later Oppenheimer, to manipulate the diamond supply, perfectly aligning it with demand and controlling consumer costs. In exchange for their support, diamond merchants received a guaranteed share of diamonds from Rhodes-controlled mines. After the First World War, overproduction in the diamond industry led to a price crash, resulting in the closure of Kimberley Mines. Oppenheimer played a key role in forming a cartel that eventually controlled diamond prices. Following the single-channeled marketing structure used by his predecessor, Oppenheimer established the Central Selling Organization, the CSO, incorporating major sellers and producers into the De Beers Syndicate. He became a director of De Beers in 1926. When Hans Marenski discovered diamonds in Namakwaland in 1927, the South African government consulted Oppenheimer, who quickly became a leading figure in the new diamond field. In 1921, he was elected chairman of the board of De Beers. Oppenheimer's strategic skills were tested during the Great Depression when mined diamond supply far exceeded buyer demand. He had to close many De Beers mines and meet purchase agreements with CSO members, stabilizing sales. In 1930, he formed the Diamond Corporation, allowing De Beers and other producers a direct interest in mineral sales. Apart from chairing AAC and De Beers, Oppenheimer served as deputy chair of the Rokana Corporation and contributed to the commissions leading to the creation of the South African Reserve Bank. He also held directory positions in Barclays Bank and the British South Africa Company. During World War II, he aided in establishing diamond cutting factories in South Africa to replace those in Europe. Under his leadership, Anglo-American evolved into a multi-million rand business. In 1924, Oppenheimer entered a South African general election, securing a seat in the House of Assembly as the member for Kimberley, a position he held until 1938. By 1927, he successfully took control of Cecil Rhodes' De Beers empire, steering the company to dominate the global diamond industry until his retirement in 1953. He assumed the chairmanship of De Beers in 1921 and faced controversies during his tenure including allegations of price-fixing, antitrust behavior, and withholding industrial diamonds for the U.S. war effort in World War II. Some historians consider Oppenheimer somewhat progressive, citing his initiatives such as providing adequate housing for black mine workers and their families on the copper mines on what was then northern Rhodesia, now Zambia. In recognition of his contributions, he was appointed as a Knight of the Most Venerable Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem in 1952. In 1910, Oppenheimer recognized the economic potential of German Southwest Africa, Namibia, in diamond mining. He took control of confiscated German mining interests, leading to the strengthening of AAC's involvement in the consolidated diamond mines of Southwest Africa. Financed largely by the AAC, the company expanded its gold mining influence into the Orange Free State and the East Rand. Ernest Oppenheimer maintained associations with various local and British universities, supporting the establishment of an engineering department at the University of Stellenbosch. He donated funds to Oxford University for a colonial research centre and received several honorary degrees. In 1956, Sir Ernest Oppenheimer's health declined and he passed away the following year. His entire fortune was bequeathed to his only surviving son, Harry, who continued in his father's footsteps. Harry Oppenheimer, the son of May and Sir Ernest Oppenheimer, was born into an assimilated Jewish family of German origins in Kimberley, the historical center for diamond mining in South Africa. 
Raised in Johannesburg, he underwent a formal bar mitzvah ceremony at the Kimberley Synagogue at the age of 13, but later converted to Christianity upon marrying Bridget McCall. After primary schooling in Johannesburg, he attended Charterhouse School in England and later studied philosophy, politics and economics at Christ Church, Oxford, graduating in 1931. Despite his conversion to Christianity, Harry remained a supporter of Jewish causes throughout his life. Notably, he played a role in authorizing the flow of diamonds to Israel's significant diamond sorting and diamond cutting industry. Harry played a pivotal role in turning diamonds into a cultural phenomenon symbolizing love and romance. Teaming up with NWA, an American advertising agency, they spearheaded a campaign that shifted public perception of diamonds from mere precious stones to indispensable elements of courtship and marriage. Over time, Eyre successfully persuaded young men that diamonds were the ultimate expression of love and convinced young women that they were essential to romantic relationships. Harry Oppenheimer held the position of chairman at Anglo-American Corporation for an impressive 25 years and chaired De Beers' Consolidated Minds for 27 years, retiring from these roles in 1982 and 1984, respectively. His son, Nicky Oppenheimer, assumed the role of deputy chairman at Anglo-American Corporation in 1983 and later took on the chairmanship of De Beers in 1998. Mary Slack, Harry's daughter, resides primarily in Brenthurst, a Johannesburg suburb, with additional homes in Muesenberg and London. She also owns Bilgerbos Drift Stud, a thriving thoroughbred breeding farm located approximately an hour and a half from Cape Town. Beyond his corporate leadership, Harry Oppenheimer served as the Member for Parliament for Kimberley from 1948 to 1957, during which he became the opposition spokesman on economics, finance and constitutional affairs. Known for his philanthropy, Harry Oppenheimer generously supported Israel's official charities, directing De Beers to provide the necessary diamond raw materials to establish Israel as a prominent diamond polishing and export nation. In the 1970s and 80s, he financially backed the anti-apartheid Progressive Federal Party, which later emerged into the Democratic Alliance. Additionally, Harry Oppenheimer was a member of the South African Freemasons, in 1973, Kimberley conferred the freedom of the city on Oppenheimer, recognizing his contribution to promoting the city as the diamond center of the world. The Harry Oppenheimer Agricultural High School in Limburg, Limpopo, bears his name in acknowledgement of the funds he provided for its establishment. The Oppenheimer Memorial Trust annually awards the Harry Oppenheimer Fellowship Award, Africa's premier research prize in memory of Harry Oppenheimer's commitment to the ideal of unambiguous excellence. Harry's son, Nicholas Oppenheimer, born in 1945, joined Anglo-American in 1968, rising through the ranks to become a director in 1974 and deputy chairman in 1983. He held key positions, including deputy chairman of the Central Selling Organization, now Diamond Trading Company, in 1984, Deputy Chairman of De Beers Consolidated Mines in 1985 and Chairman of the Diamond Trading Company in 1985. Serving as Chairman of the De Beers Group from 1998 to 2012, Nicholas retired when the family stake was sold to Anglo-American in 2011. In 2000, De Beers underwent a transformation in its business model due to factors such as the decision by producers in Canada and Australia to distribute diamonds outside the De Beers channel and the escalating negative publicity surrounding blood diamonds. To protect its image, De Beers restricted sales to its own mined products. The evolving dynamics of a more fragmented and competitive diamond market, coupled with increased transparency and greater liquidity, led to a decline in De Beers' market share of rough diamonds. From a peak of around 90% in the 1980s, the company's market share dropped to 29.5% in 2019. Recognizing these shifts, the Oppenheimer family announced in November 2011 their intention to sell their entire 40% stake in De Beers to Anglo-American PLC. 
This transaction increased Anglo-Americans' ownership of the company to 85%, with the remaining 15% owned by the government of the Republic of Botswana. The deal, valued at $5.1 billion in cash, marked the end of the Oppenheimer dynasty's 80-year ownership of De Beers. As for the reason of the sale, apparently there is no one in the Oppenheimer family that wants to continue in the diamond business. Nikki Oppenheimer featured on the Sunday Times Rich List in 2018 as the 23rd wealthiest individual in the United Kingdom, boasted a reported fortune of £5.5 billion. He secured the title of richest person in South Africa on the Forbes list of the world's billionaires for both 2019 and 2020, with reported fortunes of $7.3 billion and $7.6 billion respectively as of August 2020. The Oppenheimer family has channeled a significant portion of its philanthropic endeavors towards preserving the heritage and cultural significance of the South African region. They have also actively contributed to broader community upliftment in areas such as education, health, nature conservation, and the arts. In 2005, Nicky Oppenheimer and his son, Jonathan, established the Brenthurst Foundation as a platform to engage in discussions on strategies and policies aimed at strengthening Africa's economic performance and fostering inclusive and sustainable development. Environmental and conservation issues have long been a focal point for the Oppenheimer family. Collaborating with De Beers in 2006, they played a key role in establishing the Diamond Route. This initiative aims to maximize the potential of their properties for conservation, research, and environmental awareness purposes. The Diamond Route connects eight sites across northern South Africa, ranging from Namakwaland on the west coast to Kimberley, north to Tswalu in the Kalahari, and to the Brenthurst Gardens in Johannesburg. It extends eastwards to the Ezimvelo Nature Reserve and northwards to the Venetia Limpopo Nature Reserve in Limpopo Province. Since 2015, Oppenheimer has also served as a Rhodes trustee. While this family has opted to relinquish its control over the global diamond supply, their invaluable influence in shaping the industry for numerous decades remains unparalleled. And if you thought that was interesting, Watch the next video to see another family that commanded enormous wealth to become a global phenomenon.